when you see the figure 10.1%, it sounds high, but in fact, it's actually higher, isn't it? Well, different people will have different kind of inflation rates, Mike. So this yeah. is when you stick everything into the economy and gives you an average. And, and we've tipped over that 10% now when you're looking at the consumer price index. So how they measure it, it's a bit like what you just said there, Mike, but rather than just looking at, say, groceries, which people tend to buy on a weekly basis, so they know those prices are going up a bit more because they can see it. Mm. It'll put in things like your energy bills, your, your petrol costs. And, yeah, we've hit 10.1%, and about two-thirds of that, Mike, is, is about a, well, a quarter of it is due to the utility bills going up and our housing costs. About another fifth is transport. You lump in the food as well. That's three-quarters of the inflation. Now, the Bank of England, Mike, every month, last month they put up uh, interest rates by... 0.5%. What that does is tries to stifle demand in the economy. But I don't think people are trying to buy more food. They're going to the shops, seeing food prices going up. We're not trying to buy more kind of gas and electric. We're not trying to buy more road fuel. These are all supply side shocks. So the Bank of England are hitting us again by increasing interest rates. The only benefit of doing that, obviously, Mike, is that if the, the US increases interest rates, we become uncompetitive with the dollar, so the imports of some of these products becomes kind of uncompetitive. So that's one reason you would increase. But, you know, things like Liz Trust could easily, or Rishi Sunak, could easily cut VAT on domestic fuel, might yeah. get rid of the green levies. That would actually act as that downward pressure on the high inflation that we've seen this morning. Yeah.